By 1977, Dave Cockrum was struggling to balance a new promotion at Marvel, his home life, and his artist obligations to Uncanny X-Men, the title that he had helped to reinvigorate with the aid of first Len Wein and then Chris Claremont. John Byrne was a prolific young talent in the Marvel bullpen at the time. He had already worked successfully with Claremont on a number of other titles and had let it be known that, quote, men would die, end quote, if Dave ever left Uncanny X-Men and the job of penciler did not find its way to him. Fortunately for comics fans everywhere, and for the unnamed men in question, it never came to that. And instead, we got what has gone down in history as one of the most famous collaborations in comics. Byrne's first issue on the run was titled Armageddon Now in Uncanny X-Men number 108, and true to that title, it features an enormous roster of characters, including iconic Marvel superhero guest stars, a dizzying amount of outer space action scenes, and culminates with a completely surreal sequence in which a celestial being stitches together the fabric of the universe itself. In short, the degree of difficulty for any illustrator would be beyond all reasonable expectation and Byrne delivers a beautifully penciled issue, enhanced tremendously by the legendary inks of Terry Austin, whom Byrne would continue to work with long after his departure from X-Men, and so the collaboration began. Byrne's intricately detailed pencils with soft curves, clear lines, and a delicate expertise with perspective set a new standard for comics illustration. In a series that had previously boasted penciling runs by Jack Kirby, Neil Adams, and Cockrum, Byrne's artwork still stood out. By UXM 114, Byrne began being credited as a plotter. Together, the duo of Claremont and Byrne walked the X-Men through paradigm-altering iconic stories such as the Dark Phoenix Saga and Days of Future Past, while launching characters such as the Hellfire Club, Alpha Flight, the Shadow King, Proteus, Rachel Summers, and of course, Kitty Pride. With each issue of the collaboration, the popularity of the book increased trend of prosperity that would continue right through the end of Byrne's tenure on the series, though the exact nature of that ending has been a bit elusive and somewhat contested, with Byrne arguing that he was upset because he did not receive enough credit for his storytelling contributions to the series. This, of course, is only one account amongst many for the end to the collaboration. Other reasons given by either party include, but are not limited to, the shift in power dynamic created by Louise Simonson's appointment as editor, Claremont scripting things that ran contrary to Byrne's intentions in the illustrations, with a simple panel of Colossus yanking out a tree as the tipping point, a broader diminished perspective on illustrator contributions to plot within the Marvel method, a desire for greater creative freedom and control escalating tensions in working methods, and my personal favorite, as quoted by Byrne, a frustration with, quote, all that sex stuff, end quote, that Claremont was writing about. This last point underlines some of the political differences between the liberal, or perhaps libertine-minded Claremont, and the conservative Byrne. As an example of this, when working on Iron Fist together, shortly before teaming up on X-Men, Byrne is known to have taken issue with Claremont's subtextual portrayal of Colleen Wing as bisexual. Because sexual symbolism is highly significant to Claremont's entire run on X-Men, it's easy to see how friction could have developed. But it should be noted that Byrne was quite capable of separating representation from personal belief structures, as seen in his cultivation of North Star as Marvel's first gay superhero. From Claremont's perspective, the split remains a mystery. Quote, Honestly, I don't know. I do not know what the hell happened to this day. John got royally pissed off at me, but he never told me why, directly or indirectly. End quote. In the wake of the split, Claremont was free to plot X-Men his way, and Byrne was free to distinguish himself on other famous comics projects, completing iconic runs on Fantastic Four, Man of Steel, and She-Hulk, which, it has to be noted, featured a whole lot of sex stuff. Whatever the cause or the consequences, the split between Claremont and Byrne put an end to the longest writer-penciler collaboration within the Claremont run. We got 35 issues of Byrne-Claremont, and in the eyes of many fans of that era, it still wasn't enough. Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about the Claremont Run project, you can follow us on Twitter at Claremont Run or visit us on the web at www.claremontrun.com.